Hi there, Art 100 class. This is your overview video for lesson five, which is about storytelling in art. For this lesson, I think it helps to just think about storytelling in general a little bit first. I mean, we'll be talking about visual storytelling, but think about the way that you tell stories. Do you use a lot of slang? Do you use conversational language like the same way you would just talk to somebody? Or do you have like certain things you do when you tell a story, like maybe pace things out a little bit more slowly than you would usually speak? When I tell a story, and I wish I didn't do this, but I try and say all the parts at once. I don't know why. I get all like too excited and I try and tell the whole story in one shot and then it doesn't make sense. Maybe some of you have that problem too. Some people, when they tell stories, will use like metaphors and symbols. So instead of just saying what they mean, they'll try and tell you examples that might make you think about a different situation, or they'll use some kind of a metaphor rather than just straight out telling the story. We're going to see all of those different types of approaches in art too. You'll see some people pacing things out more slowly, some people trying to pace things in a way that's very kind of all at once, like how I tell a story. Some people try to break things up and then present them as symbols or in an allegory so that you're hearing one story, but it actually means something else. So you'll see all of the different kinds of techniques in visual storytelling that you also will notice just when people are telling stories. One of the artworks that we'll focus on, this is just one example, but um, I like this one a lot, is Peter Paul Rubens' The Consequences of War. And I just wanted to show it to you here because I think this is the kind of storytelling that we are mostly used to from images. I mean, it almost looks like a movie, doesn't it? Like an action movie. You get this sense of kind of this sweep of action going from left to right. You can look at the faces of the different characters and read the expressions on their faces in a way that helps you understand what's happening in the story. So there's lots of things here that are very kind of legible to us in terms of storytelling that we're used to seeing in movies or whatever. This also uses symbolic storytelling. So even though you can kind of get a sense of it, even without knowing the symbols, there's lots of little things like this is the god of war from Roman mythology and he's stomping on a book. So there's this kind of, you know, metaphor, I guess, for how war stamps out learning. Or here, this woman who's about to be trampled by war and you can see she's holding a broken instrument. So harmony, you know, that you get from playing an instrument would be destroyed. There's lots of other stuff in here too, but this gives you an example of that kind of storytelling, um, which again, I think is a type that we're relatively used to. Some genius on the internet made a Barbie version of this. I could not find their name. I just found the image. So I wish I could credit them, but it's so cool, right? <laughs> It's just exactly right. Like they got all of the little bits in here. Even the book. Remember how I showed you the man stomping on the book? Here's like a Ken doll stomping on a little Barbie book. There is, I guess, the musical instrument. Here's the two together. I wish I could show you a Barbie version of every painting we look at. I guess that needs to be my new hobby. I need to buy some dolls and start arranging them and photographing them. So here's this one again. So we'll see some images like this one where the type of storytelling is rather familiar to you from movies and so on. And then we'll see somewhere it probably isn't like this really interesting piece from ancient Egypt where they use all kinds of different strategies for storytelling that back then people would have recognized right away. But for us, we kind of have to learn it first. For example, you see how this this is two sides of the same thing. This is broken up into these sections. There's a line here and a line here. It's really common in ancient Egyptian art to tell a story with these vertical strips. So there's a strip, there's a strip. And each one shows a different part of the story. And we look at each of them separately, but then also look at them together to understand how the different parts of the story relate. Those are called registers. So I think if we saw this now, you know, like in a... I don't know, an ad or something like that that's trying to tell us a story and they broke it up like that, most people wouldn't get it because we're just not accustomed to that sort of storytelling anymore. But again, it was really common at the time. 
We'll also just look at the ways that some artists have tried to challenge traditional storytelling in art history. Here's a contemporary artist. She's a favorite of mine called Faith Ringgold, who makes these really beautiful painted quilts. And you can see here, she's telling a story. She says it quilt and book by Faith Ringgold. The reason she says quilt and book is because she actually has writing on here that's embroidered. So she's thinking of this as being like a book that is woven into a quilt. And it tells the story of this particular character that she creates. You'll read more about it in class. But here's um, a little close up so you can see that written part. And then there's people like Salvador Dali who are also telling us stories, but telling us stories that come from dream imagery and using the kind of rhythm and process of dreams as a way to think about how he wants to pace his stories and how he wants to communicate them. There's even just really out of the ordinary for Western thinkers types of storytelling, like we see here. This is such a cool piece to me. It's called a Lukasa, and it's from the Luba people in Congo. And I know it doesn't look it, but this is actually a, a tool for storytelling. This is all these little beads and things that are carefully arranged and specially trained people will run their hand over it and touch the different parts. And they've learned how to read it so that touching those different parts actually reminds them of elements of stories that they should tell. It looks like this. So you see this man here and he's running his hand over these beads. As he's doing that, it's reminding him of the specific stories of, you know, his people's history and certain myths and things. And then he recites them to the group. And not everybody can do this. He's specially trained to do it. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of quick takes on things. There'll be all of those and a few more um, that you'll learn more about in your lesson this week. I think it is a fun one. Here's what you have to do. So as usual, you have readings and videos to take notes on. There's a study guide to review. Remember to use that study guide. It tells you exactly what's on the quiz. You can even write some of your answers out in advance. Then you have a quiz to take and then an assignment to complete. And this week you'll have an artwork option or an essay or video option. Okay, that's all I've got for now. I hope you have a great week.